Welcome back, class. Uh, today we're going to be talking about Egypt uh, very briefly. We'll talk about um, culture and culture specifically about how it revolved around religion and religious practice. So our aim today is how was life in ancient Egypt influenced by religion? As you may remember from our chapter, uh, ancient Egypt was divided, uh, geographically at least, into two major sections, Upper Egypt in the south and Lower Egypt in the north. Um, that'll make sense in a moment when we look at the map. Um, around 3100 BCE, Menes, the king of Upper Egypt, united these two kingdoms. Um, you may recall... Uh, the uh, the changing of the crown to reflect the the union of the north and south uh, the nile river becomes not only bountiful for agriculture but also trade and these merchants would sail up and down the nile river through africa into the middle east the red sea and into the mediterranean um, so Egypt would become a very powerful river civilization uh, and indeed an empire. So here we can see a map of the Nile River Delta and we see that Lower Egypt is in the north and Upper Egypt is in the south and that's mainly due to the flow of the river. So the river originates in the south and flows north into the Nile River Delta. Uh, this is why it's seemingly upside down. The upper river, uh, I'm sorry, the upper Egypt is in the south and lower Egypt in the north. It's because of the flow and the direction of the river. So Egyptian civilization, we already established, was a theocracy governed by a pharaoh. The pharaoh was basically a living god and was treated as, um, as such until about the Middle Kingdom. And then um, the divinity of the pharaoh kind of comes into question, and uh, now the pharaoh actually has to work for obedience. It's not automatic the way it was in the Old Kingdom. Um, we talked about their written language, hieroglyphics, um, which you are all probably familiar with, um, but there are actually several types of uh, glyphs that are used in Egyptian language. So first there was demotic writing, which was a simplified writing system for the people uh, the prefix demos from the Greek meaning the people. It's where we get the prefix for democracy. Uh, this was the people's writing system. And then, of course, there was hieratic writing, which was used by priests, uh, and this was for official texts and religious texts. Uh, the writing consisted of pictographs and logograms. In other words, each picture represented a word or phrase. Unlike our language, which consists of an alphabet, uh, the letters represent sounds. Those sounds put together create words, and then those words represent ideas. Um, but the alphabet is more uh, changeable and mutable. Uh, it could be rearranged. Um, so in many ways, the Egyptian language is more similar to uh, Mandarin or Cantonese than to English, right? Each, um, each symbol represents a word or phrase. We also discussed how the Egyptians were polytheistic, meaning they believed in many gods. So for example, Ra, the sun god, Osiris, the god of the afterlife and of the dead, um, we talked about how um, you know people would be marched uh, across the river Styx. Uh, well, not marched, sailed across the river Styx uh, into the underworld. 
and then Isis, the ideal mother and wife, the matron. Um, yeah, so many, many gods in ancient Egypt. When we talk about ancient Egypt, though, we have to keep a few things in mind. Um, this graphic is uh, interesting to me. So if we think about the Great Pyramids, um, when the Great Pyramids were built, there was still a population of woolly mammoth alive on the earth. There weren't many of them, but there were some still walking around at the time the Great Pyramids were made. That's how old the Great Pyramids are. Additionally, Cleopatra, who we also think about, you know, kind of automatically when we think about Egypt, the pyramids were as ancient to Cleopatra as Cleopatra is to us. Um, so when we talk about ancient Egypt, think about that this is a long, long time that is being covered here. Um, old kingdom, middle kingdom, new kingdom. The new kingdom is, you know, ancient by our standards. So um, keep this in mind that we're talking about a, a really huge expanse of time when we discuss Egypt. Of course, here we see sarcophagi in all different um, states of preservation. And within these sarcophagi are mummies, preserved bodies. Um, we don't like tearing open sarcophagi if we don't have to. Here we see uh, an MRI machine being employed to uh, see what's inside without having to damage the outer wrapping. Uh, and you can see how well the bodies were preserved. I mean, thousands of years later, you can still make out facial features. You can see a perfectly preserved ear. You would expect to only find a skeleton um, after so much time, but um, the Egyptians knew what they were doing. Um, as we look at this map, take a look at the pyramids and how the, uh, the area around the Valley of Kings is oriented. So notice here we have the Great Sphinx and the Temple of the Sphinx here. We have the Great Pyramids, the Pyramid of Khufu, of Khafre, right? The three pyramids here. We have several temples and cemeteries all around the area. What are some interesting things you notice geographically speaking about the orientation of the pyramids? Look at the key to give you a clue, particularly the compass. All right, so if you're noticing that the compass, the compass rose, I should say, north, south, east, and west, notice how the pyramids are oriented the same way, with one face pointing due north, east, south, and west. Each pyramid is oriented in such a way that it points to the cardinal directions perfectly. Um, this is no accident, and the Egyptians uh, were keenly aware not only of the afterlife, but of the significance of astronomy and geography um, in these religious ceremonies. So hopefully um, you guys got a chance to watch the assigned videos yesterday and uh, saw how the, um, the pyramids kind of come together. Um, I'll leave these two questions to you to sort of think about on your own since uh, our assignment kind of asks the same things as a summary. So think about what these elaborate burials suggest about culture and uh, in what ways our modern burial practices are similar or different. So just keep that in mind as we move forward. So the pyramids, uh, to our best estimation, were the tombs of kings and queens um, built specifically for that purpose. 
uh, in the Great Pyramids, we found no bodies. Unfortunately, the, the graves were robbed and picked clean before um, modern Egyptologists could get in there and find sarcophagi of Khufu or Khafre. But um, uh, we know that when the pyramids were originally built, they would have had uh, a sarcophagus inside and treasures. The outside of the pyramids would have been clad in beautiful uh, limestone. So the the pyramids would have been smooth and shimmering white in the distance. They they would have been a sight to behold. So finally, what I want you guys to do is um, read through the worksheet that was assigned today about Panab, uh, who was an Egyptian criminal. As you read um, the worksheet and annotate and complete the questions, think about how Panab contradicts our story. Um, so far, we've thought about the Egyptians as these highly regimented, religious, um, you know, devout people. Um, think about the, the kind of effort that would have to go into creating the pyramids. You, you kind of get a picture of uh, really highly moral people. Well, um, Panab is going to throw a, a wrench into, uh, into the works and, and kind of uh, shake up our idea of what the ancient Egyptians were like. Um, read through that and think about how Panab contradicts our story. Um, thank you very much and see you soon.